Before we can talk about inclines, we need to review what normal force is, right? Normal force generally points which direction? Up. Generally, it points straight up. Usually, that's because our surface is purely horizontal, okay? But we have to shift our mind a little bit to be reminding ourselves that normal force is the force of the surface exerting a force upward on the object. And so if our surface is no longer horizontal, our normal force is no longer vertical. We have to remember that the normal force doesn't necessarily mean it points straight up. It means it points perpendicular to the object or perpendicular to the surface. So if my incline looks something like this, that means my normal force looks like that. Does that make sense? It is perpendicular to my surface. And the normal force is perpendicular to my surface now. Okay. However, does gravity change? Gravity always points where? Down. Always points straight down. Okay? So if I was going to... If I was going to look at that drawing again, there's my normal force, Fn, and my gravitational force looks like that, Fg. Do those two offset each other anymore? No, right? One of them is at an angle and one of them is not. Okay, so now we've gotten to this place where they're no longer just normal force, gravitational force equal to each other in that scenario, right? They don't just offset each other. And so we're going to look at how we can combat that and how we're going to look at that um, in our problems, okay? So whenever we start working on an incline, we're going to start having uh, forces at angles, right? Let's say that this is our, our traditional axes, right? These are our traditional axes. Does that make sense? Okay, if I just have my regular X and Y axes, and let's say I start to draw my forces. I have gravity, I have normal force, let's say I have friction going up the incline, let's say I'm pushing the box going down the incline. I have now three forces that would be considered at angles. You see that? If I kept my coordinate system the same, I would have three forces at angles. That seems like a lot, right? So the solution to that is when we're working on an incline, we are going to completely rotate our axes so that our coordinate system matches our incline, right? So now our, whatever our surface is, that becomes our x axes. Okay, we just shift our coordinate system so that if we have you know, a normal force, it points straight up. If we have friction, it goes consistent with the x-axis right along there. If we've got some sort of applied force pushing it down, it's consistent with the x-axis. What's the only problem? Gravity now sits at an angle, right? Here's Fg, and so now we've got gravity at some sort of angle. Does that kind of make sense? Now we go from three forces applied at an angle to only one. So we simplify it by shifting that axis onto an angle. Okay? So we've got this now gravity triangle that's going to be formed that's going to help us look at now gravity's not just necessarily F times or mass times gravity. Uh, it is, but we're not going to be able to use that, that value quite as often. Okay? All right. So when FG points straight down, as it will, whenever, whenever I draw inclines, you're going to see me draw it just like this really often. Okay, when force of gravity points straight down, which it does always, and we said that our coordinate system now looks like this, gravity's at an angle, right? So I have to find now the components of the triangle that gravity forms. Okay, does that make sense? This is being applied at some angle, you know, east of south. Does that make sense? So I have to find these components of my triangle before I can put them into a net force equation. Right? I can't just put in Fg anymore because it's at an angle. 
We don't ever put anything in an equation that is at an angle. Okay? Yeah? That's right. We would solve FG as mass times 9.8, and that would be like the hypotenuse of our gravity triangle. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll show you how that works here in just a minute, why it's drawn that way. Um, but we have, we have certain names for the components of our gravity triangle. Okay. This component right here, the vertical component, is called force normal. And the reason it's called that is because it would be equal to our normal force that's pointing straight up. So now if we need to solve the normal force of something on an incline, we would use the hypotenuse, the angle here, and find the normal force this way. Okay? This vertical component of our gravitational force is equal to the normal force, right? the regular normal force. Okay? So now that's how you solve for Fn on an incline. Okay, These, this horizontal component right here is called force, what's that sign mean? It's not an 11. Force parallel. parallel, force parallel. Why do you think it would be called force parallel? Because it's parallel to the x-axis, exactly, right? These two forces, or these two lines should be parallel to each other. It's parallel to the surface. The nope, the normal force is just below that, the, the component of that triangle. It's just that. This component right here is equal to the actual normal force up there. That's just how we find it. Okay, so the normal force we solve by finding the vertical component of our gravitational triangle, and those two things are equal. They're always the same. Unless you're lifting upward on the box. We're going to look at it. Just a, this is just like simple triangle stuff, sine, cosine, tangent. Be able to find that, right? You're going to find the hypotenuse. You'll have the angle. Everything like that. Okay, oh, last thing I want to talk to you about here before we kind of jump into a problem. It'll often say um, the box is sitting on a 13 degree incline. And that 13 degrees goes right there, right? My box is lifted 13 degrees or whatever it is. Based on geometry that is past what I need to explain right now, if this is FG and we make our gravity triangle, this, this triangle right here and this triangle right here are similar triangles. And so whatever angle the incline is lifted at matches our gravity triangle. Okay, so whatever it says, the, if it's on a 30, 30 degree incline, that would also be... Yeah, we wouldn't need the other angle, but you could. So let's say here this is 30 degree incline. That means this angle is also 30 degrees. Okay? Always where it's touching the axes. Uh huh. Okay, so let's just try a quick example here. Let's say that my object has a mass of 40 kilograms. Let's say my object has a mass of 40 kilograms, and I need to start solving this problem. Okay? What I would do is I'd say, okay, I have gravity. This hypotenuse right here is Fg. And to find Fg, I always do what times what? Mass, mass times 9.8. So plug that in for me. The mass of my object was 40. Go ahead and grab your calculator. If you don't have that out yet, you'll need that today. 396. Three hundred and ninety two. Close. Okay, does that make sense how we found that? Mass times gravity. That's it. Okay, and that is my gravitational force. So now if I want to solve the components of that gravitational force, is Fn sine or cosine? Here's my angle, 30 degrees. Cosine. Fn is cosine, 392 times cosine of 30. And the parallel force is 392 sine of 30. Oh, yeah. 
Those are two you can actually memorize. Sorry, I'll move those up. Normal force is cosine, parallel force is sine. A magic. Okay, so three nine. Um, mass times nine point eight. So forty times nine point eight is three ninety two. That'll always, it'll like FG will always be the hypotenuse of your triangle. Okay, so three ninety two really won't go into our problem anywhere once we've solved for those components. Okay, so three ninety two. Cosine 30, oops, so did we get 339.48 and 196? Okay, so here's what we need to be thinking about. Technically, technically, this normal force would be going in the negative direction. Right? But we don't have to add that because when we solve for the normal force, what we're really doing is solving for this normal force, which is positive. So we just can keep it positive. This is pulling in the positive direction because if we put our coordinate system here, this x would still be the positive direction. So the parallel force is what's pulling it downward. Right? Why did we choose this down the incline to be our positive direction? Positive, positive, negative, negative. Why did we choose down the incline to be our positive direction? Right. Not only is when we turn it here, it's positive, but like which way is an object most likely to go on an incline? Down, down the incline, right? So we want down the incline or forward to be the positive. Okay, let's jump in. Now we're going to do an actual problem. So here's, here's, the, here's the issue. Uh, there's a lot of steps to get to our final answer. Okay, so is it better for me to have those or just the final question? Is it more intimidating to have those questions there? Do you like the questions there? All right, we're just going to say that we want to find the acceleration. That's our overall goal. Acceleration, that's our final goal. If at the end of the day you want those questions there to write down to kind of help prompt you through the problem, I can put those back up. Okay, but for right now we're going to just kind of walk through. So write down what you need and we're going to go. Go ahead and start drawing the diagram if you can. All right, here's my diagram. All right, so it says it's sliding on a frictionless incline. The incline makes a degree of 30, an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. Our goal is to find the horizontal acceleration. So what forces do I have acting? Um, gravity. Always gravity. And let me just point out, it does not matter if you draw the free body diagram from the middle of the object or from the surface. It makes no difference where you really draw that from. And you don't really have to draw the object at all, but that's up to you. Okay, we have gravity, we have the normal force, no friction, and then is there anything pushing it down the incline? No. No, right? So it's just those, that's it. Okay? But we know that we can't solve gravity like that. We need to break gravity into its components. Okay, and so the vertical component of gravity is called what? normal, and the horizontal component of gravity is called parallel, okay? What do I know this angle has to be? 30. It has to be 30. So I'm going to put that in there. 30 degrees sits right in there, okay? 
All right, so now my next step needs to be what? Where do we go from here? I'm going to find gravity, right? I need to find gravity. Fg is equal to what times what? Good, 10 times 9.8, which is 98, right? So 98 newtons is the hypotenuse of my gravity triangle. Are we on the same page with that? 98 newtons is the hypotenuse of my gravity triangle. So now I'm going to solve for Fn and F parallel, right? In this problem, do we really have to solve for both? Not really, because it's frictionless, we don't need the normal force, but we, we do need parallel. So if you want to practice solving for both, you can. But the reason we would need to solve for both is if there is friction. If we need to know the normal force, we have to put that in there. So let's go ahead and solve parallel. I would take 98 times sine of 30, and I get what? 49. 49. 49 newtons. Okay, you can solve for Fn here if you want, but you don't have to. Okay, my goal is to find the horizontal acceleration. So how many horizontal forces do I have? One. One. I have parallel force. Do I have any other horizontal forces? No. So when I set up my net force equation in the horizontal direction... Is that red kind of hard to read? Are you guys okay? Okay, I would say force parallel because it's going in the positive direction. Do I have anything opposing that motion? No. So I can say minus zero just so I know I thought about it and there's nothing there. Or you can leave that minus zero off. That's up to you. Okay? So I know parallel force is equal to 49. What can I solve? substitute for F net? Mass times acceleration so that gives me an acceleration equal to 4.9 meters per second squared why did we solve for F parallel well it was vertical and we asked for horizontal acceleration and so since we didn't have friction we didn't need the normal force we just didn't need it anywhere you're welcome to solve for it. You just didn't have to have it in this problem. Okay. Is that good? Are you feeling okay? So if you look at all these questions I laid out, what was the force due to gravity? We solved that. We solved the normal. We didn't need the normal force, so we didn't solve for it. But parallel force, we did that. Acceleration. We did all of those things. So the questions just were leading us to our final answer. Um, so... 4.9 meters per second squared. All right, here we go. A 466 Newton object is on a 33.3 degree incline that's 8.45 meters long and frictionless. How long will it take the object to get to the bottom of the incline? This is a lot. All right, so I want us to kind of think through this problem before we start getting too far into numbers. What's our overall goal? What's the absolute end goal here? Like, what are we solving for? Time. time. Our overall goal is time. And so what does that lead us to believe we're going to have to use? A, a kinematics, right? We're going to use the kinematics to solve for time. And so in order to use the kinematics, what do we have to have from this problem? We have to have acceleration first. 
Okay, so that's two different really things we're focusing on here. Acceleration we can get from our force problem, time we have to get from a kinematic. So we'll get to that part in a second, but let's, let's refocus our goal now to solve for horizontal acceleration, which looks very similar to what we just did in our last problem. Agreed? Okay, so let's go ahead and solve that. Fg I know is what? No, we were right. Manju was right. 466, it's already in Newtons. So Fg is 466. You do not multiply that by 9.8 again. Right? It's already in Newton, so it's already a force. Right? Does that make sense for everybody? Okay. So do we need normal and parallel here? We, we really just need parallel. It's frictionless, so we're not going to need the normal force there. So for parallel, I would say 466 times sine of 33.3, right? I didn't put that angle in there, but we know that this angle is 33.3. That sits right in there. 255. Okay. 255.84. Is everybody on the same page with that so far? We're feeling good about how we got there. Okay, so now I want acceleration. Do I want vertical acceleration or horizontal? I want horizontal acceleration. So if I set up my net force equation in the x direction, what's my only horizontal force? Force parallel, right? Minus, there's nothing else happening on the other side. So I put in a minus zero if you want. You don't have to if you don't want to. Okay, my force parallel I know is 255.84. What do I substitute right here? F net equals M times A. Is the mass 466? No. Right. I take 466 and I divide by 9.8 to get my mass. That's just an extra little step we got to remember to do. Okay, thank you. So that makes it 50.91 times A. I yeah. Wait, what? 47.55. Okay. 47.55 times A equals 255.84, which means A is equal to 4.38 meters per second squared. Oh, I can't hear. Okay. 5.38 meters per second squared. Okay. So now I've got my acceleration, but my overall goal is to solve for time. What other kinematics variable do I have? I have acceleration. I have final displacement. So I know that XF equals 8.45. I know that initial velocity is zero. Which kinematics can I use? I think the second one also. 8.45 equals 0 plus 0 plus 1 half. 5.38 T squared. Does that make sense where all those numbers came from? My acceleration is positive because it's flowing down the incline, which is the positive direction. So let's see, two point. Uh, are we getting show? Maybe somewhere around two. Two point six nine. Okay. Two point seven seconds. One point seven. Oh no! Not. Did we? Oh, okay. So when you square root it, you get 1.7? 1. 1.7. 1. 7. Okay. How do we go about finding Fg here? 20 times 9.8, good. One ninety six, okay. Are we going to need both parallel and normal here? 
Yes, because I have friction, and if we remember back, the equation for the force of friction is coefficient times the normal. So remember, I'm going to have to have my normal force anytime it talks to us about the coefficient of friction or anything like that. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and just go ahead and solve for the parallel force and the normal force. Do we agree with those values, parallel and normal? Yeah. Okay. So overall goal here is to find horizontal acceleration. How many horizontal forces do I have? Two. Two, right? These are questions you should be asking yourself as you're solving these problems. Parallel and frictional force. So when I go set up my net force equation, F net in the x direction, what am I going to take? What minus what? Parallel minus friction. How do I decide which one goes first? Right. Parallel force is pointing in the positive direction. It's always positives minus negatives. So parallel minus force of friction. My parallel force I know is 150.1. My frictional force is coefficient times the normal force. Okay, you can plug that and solve that ahead of time and then just plug in the, the number for that. I don't, I don't care. Okay, and then F net X is always mass times acceleration. I had 4.98 something, I just rounded up. I'm going to go ahead and start solving it on the board, so if you get stuck, you can take a look up here, but try to do your best to solve it on your own. So look, once we get to this point, Manju's right. If you get a negative acceleration, that should be a problem, right? That's a that's a that's a red flag for you. My frictional force is 186. My force that's pulling it down the incline is only 119. Is is it enough to get it into motion? No. no. So you say it does not move. Right? That's it. You don't have to solve it out. If your frictional force is greater than the force that's being applied for you or the greater than the force that's pulling it down the incline, it won't move. Okay, so you can just stop it there. Because a negative acceleration tells you that friction is pulling it up the incline. Friction is accelerating it up the incline, and we know that that doesn't happen. Okay, that's the difference.